Hello everyone, in this video I want to discuss the option type equals mixture in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser, on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor models and latent class models. And if this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including other videos and workshops and also um, a link to my weekly newsletter. So in this video here I want to discuss the type equals mixture option in M plus broadly so that you can get a sense for when this is used, how this is used and how this may be useful to you in your statistical analyses that you might do with M plus in the future. So type equals mixture in M plus refers broadly to any kind of mixture distribution statistical model such as a latent class model, a latent profile model, a factor mixture model, a growth mixture model, a regression mixture model and so on. So whenever you uh, suspect that there is unobserved heterogeneity, unobserved groups and you want to examine whether your population consists of several subpopulations that differ in the parameters of your statistical model, for example, that differ with regard to regression coefficients such that you have a latent moderation or something like that, or that differ with regard to item response patterns such that you would have a latent class model or an item response theory mixture model such as the mixed rush model for example. So whenever you think that parameters of your statistical model may be different across different unobserved groups that you would like to detect then you would use type, type equals mixture in the M plus software. And so here I want to show you so say what the default setting is for um, that type equals mixture option and then I'll also discuss how you can get um, other models other than what M plus would give you by default. So let's check this out here. You can see that I have my data file here as usual. I have my variable names list. I have four variables in this case x1 through x4 and here uh, I have a command in the variable statement that is called classes. And so the classes command always has to be specified whenever you use type equals mixture because M plus needs to know how many latent classes or how many populations, so to say, you're assuming. And this is something then that um, you can study for, for example, starting with two classes, three classes, four classes. For each class model, you would have a separate input file where you specify the number of classes. So in this case, it's a two class model. The C here indicates the name of the latent class variable that I chose. So it's a name of a categorical latent variable. And so here I chose the name C. You could choose something different if you like. And then the number in parentheses indicates the number of latent classes or the number of unobserved subpopulations that then will be extracted. And so then under analysis we have type equals mixture which tells M plus okay this is a mixture distribution analysis now I need to look at the classes subcommand to see how many classes they want and then M plus will follow this and it will extract as many classes as you have listed here. Now in this case when you use this very minimalistic default setting without a model statement what M plus will do is it will give you by default a so-called latent profile analysis. So the latent profile analysis is conducted when you have continuous um, observed variables and when you don't say anything specific about the variables in your names list then M plus will automatically treat them as continuous variables and then when you also don't include a model statement in which you could formulate a specific mixture model so for example a regression mixture model or a factor mixture model or a growth mixture model then M plus will think that oh there's no specific structure other than that the classes can differ in their means. So it'll assume then that different classes have the same variances, that the indicators are uncorrelated within class, within each class, and that the classes can only differ with regard to their size and with regard to 
the means of these indicators. And that's called a latent profile analysis model. So that's what you would get if you ran the input file like this. This would be a latent profile analysis with continuous latent profile indicators. Now, if you defined those variables here as categorical, let me do this here to show you how this would work. So categorical equals x1 through x4 semicolon, then that would give you a latent class analysis. So if these indicators were binary or ordinal, meaning ordered categorical, then um, M plus would no longer fit a latent profile analysis, but rather would fit a classical latent class analysis where the class specific parameters are conditional response probabilities for all categories that would be estimated. So that would be different from a latent profile analysis model. Now, another thing, so say that you can do is you can specify a model statement. So you can run this not just so say as an exploratory uh, latent profile or latent class analysis, but you could have some kind of um, model statement. For example, you could say f by x1 through x4 semicolon and then you'd have a single factor model and that single factor model um, or oh, sorry what you also would have to specify is overall so let's not forget that so when you have a mixture model you have to specify an overall model with these um, percentage signs so you'd say overall and then f by x1 through x4 for example so then it would be a factor mixture model yeah so this would mean that in all classes you have a factor model but the factor model can differ with regard to certain parameters across classes for example the factor means could differ so you have maybe one class with a high factor level and another class with a low factor level for example or you could specify a growth model under under the overall heading so you could for example say intercept, slope, and then the sign, and then x1 at 0, for example, x2 at 1, x3 at 2, x4 at 3, semicolon. And then you'd have a linear growth curve model with an intercept and slope factor and this, these loadings here fixed such that you would have linear growth assuming equal spacing between time points if those four variables represented the same construct or the same measure at four different time points. And so then M plus would fit a growth mixture model with two classes. So that's how that works. And then another thing is you could also have more than two latent classes. So for example, when we have longitudinal data, we might want to look at a latent transition analysis model. And so in that case, um, you could have more, you could have another class variable here. So for example, you could have, uh, let's say C1 for time one, and you could have C2 for time two, and they maybe have the same number of classes. And then under the uh, model statement here you would then say which indicator belongs to which latent class variable so you would have the time one indicators assigned to uh, the c1 latent class variable and the time two indicators so this to the c2 latent class variable so the model statement would look different than here for the growth mixture model obviously and so then you could also run a latent transition analysis model with two or more classes in M plus so you can see this type equals mixture option opens up the possibilities for a lot of modeling options. It's very flexible in terms of what you can fit. All kinds of different mixture models could be used um, here in M+, latent class models, latent profile models, latent transition models, growth mixture models, regression mixture models, factor mixture models, and so on. It's a very flexible framework in the M plus software. I hope you found this video useful to get you started with latent class models and mixture models in the M plus software. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Also hit the like button in case you like this video and don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next week.